Hello and welcome to Tats Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I am going to dive deeper into setting up multi-state objects and slideshows in InDesign for digital publishing. In the last episode of this series, we already covered how to create buttons, but in this episode, I would like to show you how to work with the object states panel and also the folio overlays. So we are going to use a little bit more features now and I would like to turn this spread into a little bit more interesting publication. Instead of having all the six cameras side by side, I would like to create an interactive uh, image which uh, the reader can interact with and change to whichever camera he's interested in. So I'm going to put them first of all into a multi-state object. Then we are going to set up buttons to switch between these states. And then we are going to also use the folio overlays and set up a slideshow based on our multi-state object. So let's get started. We already have all the six images here ready. So all I need to do is just to turn them into a multi-state object. But before I do that, I'm going to select all six of them. So I'm just make sure I select them all. And then I'm going to use the alignment options. So I just go to the window menu and I choose object and layout, align. And from this panel, I am going to use the option here, align objects to the left. And I just make sure the align to option is selected, align to selection. So now I choose align left edges and then align top edges. So now they are all on top of each other. And actually I can use now the align objects to horizontal centers and also vertical centers. So I, they are completely aligned to each other. Now I can close this panel. I don't need it anymore. And I can hold down Command and Shift or Control Shift on PC and start dragging one of the corner points of these images just to make them bigger. So that looks already much better. And now still having them selected, I'm going to make sure that they are pasted on one layer. It just makes the work easier. So I'm going to use a new layer. I create that layer and I can put it here on the top. And I'm going to call that layer slide show elements like that. And I'm going to drag and drop all these objects in there. What you can also do just to make sure that you copied everything is to press Command or Control X to cut, select the layer in which you want to place them and choose Paste in Place, which has a little bit complicated keyboard shortcut, but it will make sure that these elements are placed exactly where they were in our document, but onto this new layer that I just created. So Paste in Place and they will have that color that nice uh, teal color around them which represents that they are in that layer okay now that we are, have everything set up we can go to the object states panel and here we can click on the drop down menu and choose new state while we have these images selected if i click on that it will create automatically a multi-state object for us now here we can see the images and we can already switch between them. And you can already see that it will be a little bit easier to deal with a slideshow like this instead of using only buttons to move images around in our document. Both has its advantages, but I prefer to do slideshows like this. So we can see they are already there and it's good to name our states as well. So instead of having like state one, we can rename that by double clicking on it. And then I can just type in Lumix. So that's the first one. The second one is the Sony. So let me just type in Sony on state two. That's it. Then state three is a uh, Nikon. State four is Canon, and then state five is Olympus, and last one, the state six is a Pentax camera. So now that we have all six slides or states uh, named, we can also name our slideshow. We can call it cameras. 
So let me just call this cameras. That's it. So that's our multi-state object called cameras and each of the uh, slides or states are also named properly. I can decide which one to come first so I can always move these states around so I can choose to have the Nikon first or the Olympus first let's just keep that first for now and then all we have to do is to create buttons to interact with this multi-state object so let's just do that I'm going to place the buttons here on the top I just select this white background and lock it command L is to quickly lock an element and I might lock this background element as well so I won't be able to select them I can only interact with the cameras and the text so I'm going to copy this text here and I'm going to type in the camera names so I'm going to start with Canon and I make this smaller if uh, whenever your text frame is bigger than the text you can always double click on a corner point and that will snap the frame onto the text itself I'm going to place that here on the left so that's Canon and what I would like to do is to turn this into a button so before I'm going to create the other buttons I'm going to set this up properly and then it will be easier to uh, recreate all the other ones so I'm going to select the text frame and I'm going to buttons and forms and I choose button from the type and then what I would like to call this is obviously the name what I have in the button Canon but what is very important is to set up the action properly so what I need is to interact with our multi-state object in this document and for that I need to choose go to state and you can already see that this won't work with an interactive PDF so multi-state objects will only work in digital publication or Swift files so that is a limitation but not really a big issue so let's just choose go to state and as soon as I select that uh, InDesign immediately finds the only state or multi-state object on this page which is the cameras and it immediately selected the Olympus state now instead of that I need the Canon state so I'm going to choose Canon and I can also define a rollover appearance for my button which I would like to so I just select rollover and then I just change this into a different color so I just select the text while the rollover uh, part is selected and I'm going to change the color to let's just say cyan okay now we can see that's the rollover color and then we can also choose a click color for the same text and I'm going to change that and change the color once again and maybe choose uh, let's just choose red so I'm just going to choose red that's it okay now we can already test how it works so we have our button which are going which is going to uh, switch to another state and the way we can preview that is by clicking on the preview spread option it will open up the Swift preview panel you can make this a little bit bigger and we set our multi-state object to start with Olympus camera but as soon as I click on the Canon button which we can see it's nicely set up so I can interact with it it will immediately switch to that other camera so that's already fine but we have to recreate this with all the other buttons so let's just quickly do that and the reason why I set up this button completely is because if I copy it now so I hold down alt and shift and drag it and then I type in Nikon or Nikon then I can go back to the buttons and forms and I can call this Nikon and then I can change the option here in the state to Nikon and the only problem is that it's not enough to change the text for the click state we have to change it for all three states so that's the only problem that we have to deal with so we have to change all the three uh, states of this button to the name that we need so that's it and then for normal again I have to type it in like that okay and then let's just have a look at the uh, preview now so now that we have these two buttons available let's see how it works 
So now we will be able to switch between the two cameras with these two buttons. So that's Canon and there's Nikon. And I can switch back and forth. So you can see how easy it is to set up um, buttons for switching between the states. But what if you want to just simply go over them? So from left to right, you just simply want to go one by one over all the cameras. Well, for that, you also have an option. So instead of having these uh, buttons on the top, or apart from having them, you can also have arrows, for example. And all you need to do for that is to create uh, something that can represent the button for switching between the states. So I'm going to choose Polygon Tool. And I'm going to draw a triangle, but for that I need to double click on the polygon tool and set the number of sides to three. I click on OK, and then there's my triangle, and I just need to make sure that this is filled with white paper color and there's no stroke around it. So I just get rid of the stroke, and then I just rotate it a bit. I'm going to move it here on the left. So there's the arrow. And we can stretch this a bit just to make it a little bit more visible that's it and I might reduce the opacity of this I don't need it to be st so strong that's enough and then I'm going to set up a button action on this so I'm going to choose buttons type button and I'm going to choose previous state that's the name for the button and I choose the action also the same go to previous state and the object is already selected for the cameras and then I can choose stop at first state if I want to and I can also add appearance change to the to this uh, triangle which is probably good I can change something like let's just say the color again we are going to change it to blue so it's visible that it's an interactive element Okay, now I'm going to again duplicate this, hold down Alt, Shift to drag, and then click on this icon here to flip horizontally this button. I can move it a little bit further to the right. And then I just go back to the buttons and forms, and I, uh, I will call this next state. And I change the go to previous state, I remove that action, and I assign uh, go to next state like that and you can also choose stop at last state and the rollover effect is already there so we don't have to do anything and I'm just going to turn off this uh, panel actually we need the the other panel the preview panel so I just click on it and let's have a look so we can still switch between these two cameras for which we created individual buttons but then we have these buttons as well the left and right buttons and with those we can go to the next states and because Lumix is the last in our list, it stops there, so I can't go to the next state, but I can go to previous states, so I can switch back until I get to the first camera, which is Olympus. So that works really well to switch between the states using these buttons, but what if we want to take this even further and we want to give like autoplay options and make it even more interactive? Now for that we have to use the digital publishing uh, suite options which we can find under the folio overlays. If you select the uh, multi-state object and choose folio overlays panel then you will see it automatically shows that this element can be turned into a slideshow. And there's a lot of options here, but before we actually use this, I would like to point out that if you want to use this option, you will have to use a single page layout. You can't use a spread. So I can show you, it will warn us, if I click on preview and preview on desktop, it will immediately tell us that we have to uncheck the facing pages option. So that is a bit of a problem if you start working in uh, facing pages. But what I'm going to do in this case is just simply use a landscape format new document. And I'm going to set the intent to digital publishing. And then I'm going to click on OK. I use iPad, a landscape format. So there's the uh, layout we will be able to use. And I'm just going to quickly select all, this, uh, all these elements. Before I select it, actually make sure that nothing is logged. So I copy everything, 
and go into the other document and paste them in and obviously it's a little bit bigger so I just have to resize it I'm going to just using command shift and then drag everything into place okay now we can zoom a little bit closer and just drag these out until we feel in the page enough Yes, something like that. Let's have a look. On the right, it's a little bit too big, so I'm just going to make it even smaller. That's it. Okay, so now we are not using anymore the facing pages option. It's one single page that we are working on. And I really wanted to point this out because I see this uh, many times that uh, people run into the same mistake. Uh, they start using facing pages for digital publication while it should be done on uh, single pages so if i go back to my multi-state object folio overlays and i choose for example autoplay and i can see that there is a crossfade already selected uh, to fade between the states and the interval between the slides will be two seconds then i can now choose preview and I can sh see it on, on an iPad if I have it connected to my computer or I can preview it on my desktop if I click on that option and we will get this uh, separate window which will show us how it looks so Adobe Content Viewer comes in and it will start playing our slideshow automatically so that is a very neat feature that we can preview our digital publishing on our desktop using the Adobe Content Viewer and uh, we can see how it works it nicely goes around and when it gets to the end it will start again from the first slide and the good thing is that we can still use the buttons so we can always switch to Nikon or Canon and you can see the nice fade between them is set up automatically even the uh, rollover effect or the uh, effect on the buttons is going to have a fade on them. So let's just go back to InDesign and let's have a look at the other options we have here in the folio overlays. We can hide the uh, folio or hide the uh, slideshow before actually it starts playing. In, in a case that we don't want it automatically to play, we can always have an image here and just an, an, a text on it to play slideshow for example before it actually automatically starts to play so by using the multi-state object and the folio overlays and the adobe content viewer we took what we learned in the previous episode about buttons to the next level and now we created a much more interactive page for our digital publishing content I hope you liked this tutorial and I hope you learned some useful tricks and next time we are going to again take this further and learn more about digital publishing with InDesign Creative Cloud. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time here on Tuts Plus.